Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Crypto Vision Podcast brought to you by Tokamize. I'm your host, Rob Igram, director at Tokamize, a creative engineering crypto and NFT company helping businesses all over the world with their blockchain development, crypto marketing, and NFT token sales strategy. In this podcast, we're discussing any blockchain and NFT topic that's relevant for businesses and founders. Today, I have with me Ali, who is the founder of Reddick. Hi, Ali. Welcome. Hi Rob, uh, thanks for inviting me to your podcast. I'm glad to be here. Thanks again. Maybe you can tell us first a little bit about Reddick uh, is doing. Mm -hmm. Reddick is a mobile blockchain gaming startup that uh, aims to make blockchain gaming easy, understandable, and accessible to everyone. Uh, we solve a critical problem in Web3 gaming space that people uh, are struggling. Um, with understanding and start playing blockchain games and uh, this is the problem that makes uh, audience of blockchain games is really less than uh, web 2 so like traditional mobile games uh, so we are trying to make blockchain gaming sound uh, and like have the experience as web 2 gaming but has the benefits of web 3 gaming so we place ourselves as like Web uh, 2.5 uh, project, so we are in the middle, uh, and yeah, this is what we are doing. And our main product is Vertical Rated Launcher uh, that will uh, contain many games in it. So it's like a Google Play Store and App Store, but watching games, and it also has all the tools uh, that a player may need to play blockchain games, so it has the games, it has the wallet, DeFi platform, NFT marketplace, even a small uh, metaverse we call Reddit Hub. So it basically has everything in it. Uh, it doesn't have any difference it, it, uh, than like uh, Web2 games. Uh, so to start playing, you only uh, download the app, put your phone number, then you are, you are all set and you can start blockchain games. You have your own wallet in the right launcher, so you don't need to struggle with some external wallets, etc. Uh, and uh, you can also buy crypto uh, with credit cards and you can cash out as coupon costs as well. So if, if you don't know how to trade crypto, it's okay. You don't need to, so you can buy with credit card, you can cash out with some coupon codes or like some tickets. So uh, you don't need to struggle with anything about blockchain space if you are not familiar with it. And as we know, billions of people are not familiar with the blockchain space. There are like 2.2 billion mobile gamers. But when it comes to blockchain game space, the audience is something like uh, 20 or 30 million active players we have, uh, so there's a huge gap between those numbers, so we are trying to build a bridge between uh, those two spaces. Okay, thank you, Ali. And what do you experience, or in your in your opinion, what is the main benefit of using blockchain in, in gaming? Uh, Possibilities with blockchain, if you are integrating blockchain into a game, is, uh, I believe, like, um, you can basically do anything, build anything, so, so you have the tools to build any economic model uh, inside the game. To, if I need to speak with an example, we are building um, a race game currently, a mobile race game, a stunt race, uh, with blockchain features, uh, it's called Sky Race Drive to Earn. And what we are doing inside this game, uh, if we if we were building a standard traditional uh, mobile race game, we need to buy licenses from uh, like car manufacturers, right? Car brand owners, uh, and we we buy it, then we put it inside our game. But what we do inside the game. We are building the game as it supports um, all of the vehicles, so like motorcycles, formula cars, rally cars, and you know, like trucks. So it supports all of the 
um, a lot of vehicles, and we uh, want to able uh, to, we want to I, uh, we want to able anyone, any company, any brand, any like famous people to uh, create their own um, car collection or their own vehicle collection. So we can have drivers collection. We can have like b b um, car car brands collections. Like for example, we can have a collection of Greenpeace, some green cars that says, yeah, like support, like support this and uh, like uh, let's protect nature. So, and it can uh, monetize their brands and they can uh, get profit from selling uh, vehicle collections. So uh, instead buying licenses and putting those cars inside the games, we can able anyone, any person or, or organization to create their own collection. So it's, it's a whole different uh, point of view uh, to build a um, car race game. And also we can, we can also like allow people to monetize their time. Uh, so if they are playing good and if they are playing like much, they can get benefit. They can earn some money and it is not only uh, beneficial and it's only worth inside the game, but it has a, a global worth. So they can buy a coffee with that. So it is as simple as that. Okay, okay. And do you also see any downsides of using blockchain for gaming? Um, it's a hard question since I'm a like blockchain enthusiast. Um, I think that um, like this this is not about blockchain gaming. This is not a downside of blockchain gaming, but this is downside of uh, blockchain gaming studios. Uh, and projects, they are not focusing on fun part. They are not focusing on gaming part, they are, but they are focusing on blockchain. So I think if this is the same blockchain gaming, the focus should be on gaming. Since like blockchain is the boring part, people don't mind the blockchain. People, people like people don't buy technologies. Blockchain is a technology. People buy experiences. People buy fun. People don't buy uh, like the technology that's uh, like um, that runs um, cinemas, theaters, but they buy the movie tickets. So they don't buy the cameras, they buy the movie tickets. So I think the focus should be on uh, providing a fun, providing a, a, a good gaming experience, but most of the projects doesn't do it. They have a focus on blockchain and they have the focus on selling some assets on blockchain, NFTs, tokens, and they do it too early. So they firstly do it for fundraising, then the price goes down, they uh, tell people, hodl, 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 then the price goes up to zero, then yeah, they, they build something really bad or they don't build at all. So I think this uh, point of view is really uh, hurting the blockchain gaming name. And what do you recommend for like other founders and entrepreneurs who want to go into the blockchain and NFT space? Do you have any tips for them? Yeah, I think so. Like they should focus on gaming and they should uh, meet with people uh, coming from traditional gaming space. So they need to get advice from them. In my opinion, it will be really like the best thing they can do. So they need to have some uh, advisors from Web2 gaming space and they need to have uh, some game designers in the team. Uh, I think like most of the team is uh, has like has the designers, has the blockchain developers and web developers, but and, and maybe like game developers, but they don't uh, put time, they don't put effort to uh, work on the game design. Uh, so like it, it is not graphic design, it's, it's the design of the experience. So they don't need to overlook that. Okay, okay. Well, thank you so much, Ali. I'm sure there's much more to talk about, but uh, let's dive into that in the next uh, time possibly. In the meantime, 
thanks everybody for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.